Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter Rio 2016 limited edition of 3016 pieces. You can see and you can purchase this Olympic limited edition Omega Seamaster on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Rio 2016 Olympic Edition Omega Seamaster. Now the watch on my wrist represents a special iteration of the well-loved and long-running Seamaster 300 meter. A design we first saw in 1993, it's evolved slowly and aged gracefully ever since. Possibly most famous as the James Bond Seamaster from the Pierce Brosnan era, today it lives on as an icon in its own right alongside the subsequent Planet Ocean and more surf turf or dress oriented Aqua Terras. Now the watch on my wrist is a handsome and memorable addition. The essential size of the watch is the one we've come to know and love. 41 millimeters across the round of the case, not including crown guards, crown, or helium escape valve at 10 o'clock. The watch is fairly slim. I measured it 13 millimeters with a generous slope to its bezel. The bezel has always been more of a, a dress bezel, to be perfectly honest, than a truly useful diving bezel. It's a little bit difficult to grasp, but the advantage is that it cuts such a low profile, the watch wears more like an 11 millimeter thick timepiece, the way a sleeve ramps up and over. Now, across the wrist, and you measure it from the solid end links of the bracelet, I'm going to emphasize rather than the lug to lug, but across the wrist, the watch measures a robust 52.3 millimeters, so though it's a 41 millimeter watch, it's not a petite timepiece and it has impressive wrist stance and presence. Now of course, the bracelet design is one of the most evocative and iconic components of the whole watch. Multi-link, small links, alternately brushed and polished, it was always a little bit more elegant than a conventional dive bracelet when it first launched in the 1990s, and it's maintained that handsome and versatile aesthetic, as well as the fine finish differentiating between the many components. It has an intricacy to it that's absolutely missing in something like a Rolex three-link oyster bracelet, but it has been upgraded since the 90s. As you can see, we're well past the era of pins and sleeves. Now all adjustments and link removal are done with screws and beautifully polished screws at that. The clasp is just as tough as ever. It was milled out in the 90s, back when Rolex was doing stamped clasps, and it remains so to this day, with deeply engraved Omega logo, satin finish, there's a beautiful hairline polished bevel along the sides, thoughtfully executed, twin triggers open it up, now lozenge shaped and polished, strong single fold deployant, also machined out swing arms, they are very, very solid, and you'll also note that the Famous diving clasp, also machined from the solid, very confidence inspiring. You can see this one's so new it's even got a little bit of original shipping tag in it. Also upgraded in that it's a more robust structure than the original Bond era. One of the best diving clasps of the 90s, it's still one of the best to this day. Very, very robust and crisp. Opens and closes with a snick and a snap. You'll never use it over a dive suit, or at least most of you won't, but it's there if you need it. And here's a clue, pro tip, you can use it over thick winter coats and sweaters. It's 17 degrees right now in Philadelphia. I know how I would use that dive extension. Now once you get back to the case, you can see it's the handsome asymmetrical beveled and satin finished case that we've come to know. Dominant linear satin finish along the case band flanks on both sides. The highlights are in high polish, and this is the asymmetrical case that came into use in the mid-1960s on Seamaster and Speedmaster models. Exclusive, however, to the Seamaster is this robust crown guard structure. Now you can see I have the crown pulled for two reasons. First, to show you hacking seconds, and second, to show you the quick set function of the date. Feature rich, on the opposite side, you get another feature not included on any Speedmaster, the helium escape valve. Part of the watch since its debut in the 90s, it's a little bauble that, like the dive extension, is probably more visual bravado than practicality, but it's there for you saturation divers should you ever need it. For everyone else, it's luxury, that is, more than you need for your money, and it's a fun conversation piece. Plus, in the Bond era, this thing served as a remote grenade. Now, the dial is of a higher grade than Pierce Brosnan ever knew, more on that in a moment. 
The bezel is one of the highlight features of this Rio 2016 edition. You can see the Olympic colors inside the ceramic bezel, and it is a ceramic bezel. The colors themselves are beautifully glossy lacquered paint, and then the luminescent pearl at 12 o'clock is almost like an inverse pearl. Rather than the dot itself being luminescent, it's the triangular surround that's luminescent, which actually makes a lot of sense, as that's a bigger target and easier to see in low or no light conditions. Now, it's a very crisp bezel, even if it's a little bit resistant to movement. Again, not the easiest one to grip, but very firm and secure once stopped and set. You can use it to align with the skeleton style minutes hand, and I used to use this for timing tests back in my college days. Use it dive bezel for timing everyday intervals rather than dives. You'll find it's more practical than a chronograph uh, because you generally time things that are between zero and 60 minutes. You tend not to run chronographs for hours. Therefore, this is more practical and easier to read at a glance. Plus, it doesn't have the downstream maintenance costs of a complicated chronograph mechanism. All applied indices, like I said, when this watch first came out in the 90s, this basic design used a printed dial. Today, all applied. Now, one of the elements that we lost with the change from the original metallic dial to a lacquered dial was the handsome Omega wave pattern on the base. A lot of people miss that on the gloss lacquered dials of today and the ceramic dials that have permeated the Omega catalog. Well, here it comes back, albeit inspired by the boardwalks of the Copacabana beach of Rio de Janeiro rather than the waves of the sea. But here it is, we have a 300 meter ceramic era with a wave dial. It's a reunion with this handsome design, albeit from a different inspiration than the original. Now, the watch features a caliber 2500 coaxial chronometer underneath its Rio 2016 case back. As you can see, limited edition, individually numbered, and the caliber has a 48 hour power reserve, a coaxial escapement, beating away now at the signature coaxial specific 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate. You may ask, wasn't the 2500 rather delicate back in the day? It was, if by back in the day you mean 1999 to 2001. Now that the tri-level coaxial architecture has been implemented on all subsequent versions and the beat rate has been stepped back from 28.8, these are very tough, free sprung, very accurate, and because they're robustly modified from the underlying ETA2892A2, the movement is more exclusive to Omega and of a greater high horology pedigree than the old caliber 1109s and 1120s from the Bond watch era. Beautiful on the outside, fairly rare by the standard of Omega limited editions, and one of the most handsome 300 meter divers of the last decade. You can see and own this Rio 2016 special edition on our website.